Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more extra credits. This time we're continuing on with our first, the, four, blah, 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 the first Opium War series, uh, number three, Gunboat Diplomacy Extra History. Before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I would love it if you joined the Discord and followed me over at Twitch. Okay, Gunboat Diplomacy. Let's just go ahead and dive right in. Guns had been fired, lives had been lost, but full-scale war wasn't a certainty wow. yet. The British set up a bl Hold on. <clears throat> oh, can I do my Waluigi? Wah! Wah! Blockade. The Chinese were offering to let British captains dock so long as they signed a bond saying that they would never sell opium in China and were willing to be subject to Chinese law. But the British had already put out the order. No British ship was to trade with the Chinese. Tensions are high. Something would have to give. Whoever came up with the theme song here for Extra History, you're a fucking genius. Because this shit slaps. On the 3rd of November, 1839, a British ship by the name of the Royal Saxon approached Canton. They were signaled to stop, to turn back, but they made a run for it. One of the dun, dun, British dun. ships in the blockade fired a warning shot. It skipped past their bow. The cannon shot was heard from the shore. The Chinese admiral stationed at Canton made his decision. He would send out his fleet to protect the Royal Saxon. And so a small host of junks and fire ships began to pour out of the Canton harbor. The situation was confused. The commander of the ship that originally fired requested permission to engage. Captain Elliot, the superintendent of British trade and the man who'd convinced the British merchants to hand over their opium in the first place, initially wavered, but the Chinese ships were bearing down hard. Another request to engage was made. The Chinese ships were festooned with red flags, the color of war. The honor of his nation and his flag would not allow Elliot to back down before such intimidation. The order was given, and the men engaged. The first broadside roared over the water. British shells shredded one of the fire rafts. There was a cataclysmic explosion, a gout of flame and sea. One of the war junk's magazines had been hit. All that was left of it were burning planks carried by the waves. The ships turned to give another broadside, but the outmatched Chinese junks began to retreat. Only the proud admiral's flagship was left, standing defiantly, returning shot. But it was hopelessly outclassed and already damaged. Seeing the admiral standing alone, Elliot told his captains to cease fire. The point had been made, there was no need for meaningless slaughter. And so, see- Respect. Respect. The ceasefire. I took a little look into the uh, sec uh, comment section before uh, starting the video today. Uh, and apparently, Captain Elliot was a decent man. He helped, uh, I believe, uh, end slavery in somewhere in the British Empire. And then he, after this, after China, he goes to Texas. Uh, and largely, you know, tries to get Texas not to join the USA, peace with Mexico, that kind of thing. But then the other people in charge of Texas were like, fuck no, we're joining, we're getting, we're going to join the USA, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, but he also wanted to uh, outlaw, uh, get rid of slavery within Texas, I believe, as well. Captain Elliot, respect you. I respect you. Fire, the flagship turned and limped back to port. The first real battle of the Opium Wars had come and passed, with the British bombarding the Chinese forces for defending a British ship which they themselves had originally fired on. Yeah, what the fuck is the situation? I'm confused. For some time after this, there was a lull. Some in China even thought that the British were too far away to seriously pursue a war. But the truth was, the British were simply mustering their forces. At that very moment, Marines and soldiers from India were being redeployed and transported to China. The latest ships were dispatched from British naval yards to serve in the fight. Many in the British Admiralty saw this as an excellent opportunity to field test the iron steam and sail ships that were just rolling off the lines. When the forces arrived though, the British descended on the island of Tucson. The Chinese and British officials met, once on the Chinese flagship, once on the British ship. Each time, the British made their demands clear. Surrender the island and no one will be harmed. And each time, the Chinese responded in baffled disbelief. The Chinese officials told the British that, Hey, we never did you any harm. It's not right to punish us for the acts of those in Canton. They implored the British to turn away, but the British had their duty. And as the Chinese officials made clear on their way out, so did they. The next morning, the bombardment began. 
China's in the right for this one so far. Um, and they were in the right for Canton, because I'm still confused as to why the fuck Captain Elliot was firing on a uh, fellow British ship. I don't know. They didn't really explain that too well. Soon the Chinese forces retreated behind the walls of their city, and the British Marines landed unopposed. They set up their guns and then took the night to rest. By the next day, they found the city nearly deserted. Chusan had been captured with little loss of life, and the British had a jumping-off point for their operations should they decide to threaten Shanghai. By this point, the Emperor had dismissed Lin Zexu, the righteous minister who he had so celebrated a short while before, and replaced him with an official named Qi Shan, who was empowered to treat with the British. Qi Shan and Elliot began to discuss a settlement. They haggled over reparation for the destroyed opium, and eventually came to a figure of six million pounds. But Elliot was still supposed to get territory for the British Empire that they could use for a port. He offered to return Chusan in exchange for some other island, but Qi Shen was not about to give away portions of sovereign China. And so the talks broke down. Then, as the new year passed, at least for the English, an opium runner, which had snuck its way into Canton, came dun, dun. back with the rumor that the Emperor intended to resume the war and attack the British. Elliot decided to preempt such an assault, though the wisdom of trusting unsubstantiated rumors <laughs> coming from opium runners is a bit questionable. Yeah. Really, it's unlikely that such an attack was ever actually in the works. But working with the information he had, Elliot commanded the British forces to open fire on the Chinese fortifications at Chuenpi near Canton on the morning of January 7th, 1841. The fighting lasted mere hours. The British guns ripped through the fortifications and silenced any counterbatteries with haste. Then, Indian and British Marines landed and rapidly pushed the Chinese ground forces back. Tragically, a rumor had been circulating among the Chinese that the British executed every prisoner they captured, and so many hopelessly fought on to the death, until Whoa. their battalions were in tatters and their dead outnumbered their living. By 11 in the morning, the British flag flew over the Chinese battlements. 600 Chinese lay dead, a meager 100 were captured. Among the British, only 30 were wounded, and those not even from enemy fire, but because of their pieces of artillery overheating and exploding. Uh, Meanwhile, what? the Nemesis, the iron steam and sail ship that was being tested in Chinese waters, demonstrated the power of its guns and rockets, dispatching junks and chasing away the Chinese fleet. Damn. Three further forts stood to be captured, but the next morning, a Chinese physician came under flag of truce to ask on behalf of Qishan. Despite the overwhelming desire of the troops to cut their way to Canton, Elliot acquiesced. Horrified by the slaughter he had just witnessed, he wrote to one of the British trades who was pushing the war that he hoped to resolve it without further bloodshed, and that if further conflict was necessary, it was clear that they could take what they wanted. So he agreed to meet. Soon, terms were hammered out. The Chinese would pay six million in reparations. The British would pay six million to buy the island of Hong Kong. Ambassadors would be exchanged, the Chinese agreed to not call the British tribute-bearing barbarians anymore, mm. and the British would return all the forts and the territory that they had taken during the war. And most importantly, trade would resume in a much more free and open manner. So, problem solved. The Chinese get just about the best terms they could conceivably hope for under the circumstances, and the British get to fulfill their mission and open up a whole new empire for trade. And subject the Chinese people to drugs. Yay? There's been some bloodshed, but in the end, everybody's happy, right? Well, not exactly. Elliot's boss back in England, a fellow named Lord Palmerston, who will undoubtedly crop up in other episodes down the line, was not happy. The British Empire didn't get the massive sum of money he wanted as reparations for the opium that was destroyed. They didn't get to keep the territory that they'd conquered. They didn't get as many open ports as he would like, and perhaps most of all, he was livid that Elliot, who had never really been comfortable with the drug trade in the first place, didn't even ask that opium be legalized in China. So Elliot, for his swift and nearly bloodless execution of the war, was dismissed and sent packing. Aww. And Qi Shan, the emperor had to be ecstatic with these terms, right? I mean, no. the Chinese were clearly outmatched, and at the end of the day, all they had had to cede was a barren rock in the middle of the ocean. Pretty good deal, right? Well, the emperor was not so happy. In fact, he immediately recalled Qi Shan and ordered him executed for treason. Apparently, he thought they could have gotten a better deal. Uh, don't worry, Qi Shan lived, he's fine, oh. but <laughs> needless to say, neither party ever signed this treaty. So join us next time as all the voices of reason are removed from the Opium War. Oh, no. Alright, that was the first Opium War, Gunboat Diplomacy, Extra History number three. Um, I like how in this episode they, they, they are... It's... Mmm...
Oh man, don't know why I have to yawn so much. Um, I will say this is kind of this episode in particular kind of did feel a bit more favorable on the British side of things, but I'm a, I have a feeling in the next coming episode that shift is going to change. They're they're trying to they're definitely trying to play the balance of of trying to show off um the bad on both sides and of course the chinese do make a lot of bad decisions decisions that are not good for the people of course like especially the emperor here is being a bit of a fucking dick um however it's come across it, it doesn't come across as well to me because i think in this instance because this is again this is colonialism this is that this is at the end of the day this is britain trying to force upon china drugs so the this trying to balance it out in a way of also showing it really depends on how the rest of the series goes. If the rest of the series goes similar to number three here, in which it felt like they're trying to pin the blame really on both sides here for a war, I don't think that's going to go over well. I'm, I have faith in extra credits that they are not doing that, that instead they are um, going to, uh, instead it's going to start shifting to where it becomes more and more the british are you know really trying to force this stuff upon because that's what they did i believe i think if i'm remembering the episodes right i believe episode one was well balanced in that way where it was like yo the british are really pushing this fucking drug thing right um and so yeah largely to me it's like yeah the emperor is doing some dumb things here but at the end of the day the British are literally trying to force drugs upon him and his country. So it's like... Eh, eh, I, can't, I can't necessarily be too mad about at the Emperor for his uh, desire for war when the country, the opposing country here is, you know wanting to fucking drug up your country <laughs> you know so yeah yeah i hope i hope my disagree my uh don't know quite what, how to word it my disgruntledness i guess with this episode it makes i hope i make that made sense my rambling there at the end but yeah that was extra history number three i hope you guys enjoyed remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.